Suspension is what allows your wheels to follow the road and what keeps your backside and spine from getting pulverized. It's also a topic that confuses a lot of riders, and I'm guessing part of that confusion comes from the language used to describe suspension. It's pretty unique. So today on Revzilla, I'm giving a class on suspension lingo. Let's open up the shop manual. Spring rate, preload, sag, damping, compression, rebound, hard, soft, fast, slow. Whew. These are all words to describe the sensation or action of suspension. But if you don't know what they mean, that is, if you don't speak the language of suspension, then they're not going to make much sense to you. So grab yourself some index cards and a Sharpie because we're going to dive into some vocabulary. First flashcard, spring rate. Springs are quite literally at the core of your fork and shock, and they're there to isolate your backside from jolts and keep your wheels in contact with the road by allowing them to follow dips and bumps in the pavement. Spring rate refers to a spring's stiffness, and it's usually measured in pounds per inch or kilograms per millimeter for our metric friends. The rate describes how much force it takes to compress the spring a given distance. Take, for example, this 450 pound per inch shock spring. If you put 225 pounds of force on that spring, it compresses half an inch. Put 450 pounds on it, and it'll compress a full inch. You get the idea, but with that load to compression relationship in mind, it's easy to understand why having the right spring rates for your body weight is important. For a comfortable and controlled ride, you need springs that are soft enough to handle bumps, but stiff enough to resist bottoming and excessive chassis pitch while braking and accelerating. Next up, spring preload. And this is a really important one to pay attention to because it's easily the most misunderstood piece of suspension terminology. Spring preload is how much the spring is compressed from its free length with the suspension component fully extended. Take this shock, for example. It's not on the bike, so it's not supporting any weight and it is fully extended. And yet the spring is still compressed a little bit by this threaded collar here. That is preload. And as we learned over at the hydraulic press, when you compress a spring, the harder it is to compress it further. So with preload, we've already compressed the spring a little bit, and that alters how much force it takes to initiate suspension motion. It also changes the total force required to completely compress or bottom that suspension piece. Look at it this way. Your average motorcycle shock might have, say, three inches of travel at the shock body. Meanwhile, the spring has six inches of travel. So the spring has a lot more available range of motion than the component it's attached to. And what spring preload allows us to do is alter the range of spring stroke that's used while riding. So adding preload will help prevent your suspension from bottoming by requiring more weight to compress the spring. And more preload can give the impression of harder or stiffer suspension. But it's important to understand that all you're doing with preload is altering the effective range of spring stroke used. Preload's primary purpose then is in setting sag. If you've ever been around a conversation about suspension, you've no doubt heard the term sag. It's our next vocab word. It is a foundational suspension metric, and it's the first thing you're gonna check and adjust when setting up your suspension. Sag is a measure of how much the suspension compresses from a fully extended, unladen position. And there are actually two types of sag. There's free sag, which is the amount the suspension compresses under the weight of the bike alone. And then there's rider sag, or laden sag, which is how much the fork and shock settle with a rider on board wearing all of his or her gear. The easiest way to think about sag is as a measure of how much suspension travel is available to extend down into dips in the road. What's the right amount of sag? As a general rule for street bikes, rider sag should be about one quarter of total suspension travel, with free sag being about one third of rider sag. You can find your bike's total suspension travel listed in the owner's manual, or you can always look it up online. If you're unable to achieve appropriate sag figures with your bike's available adjustments, or if your rider sag and free sag figures don't align, that's a pretty good sign that your spring rates are off. Ideally, you wanna run springs that allow you to hit your rider sag and free sag figures with as little preload as possible. And now, damping. For starters, let's clarify that it's damping, not dampening. You dampen a rag to clean your face shield. You damp suspension. The word literally means to reduce the amplitude of a mechanical oscillation. And oscillating is exactly what a coil spring will do if its action is left unchecked. Okay, so damping is what regulates the speed with which a component compresses or extends. And we get damping with oil. 
Forks and shocks are filled with oil that's forced through a hole or some other restriction as the component compresses or extends. The oil's resistance to flowing through that restriction creates a damping force, and that acts as drag to slow down and control suspension motion. Take this syringe. It's easy to move the plunger back and forth when it's empty, but when you're drawing water up into it or trying to force water out, it's harder to move the plunger due to the water's resistance to flowing through the tip. The same thing is happening in your suspension. Without damping, the inertia of a wheel hitting a bump might push the suspension all the way up through its stroke, and then it's gonna pogo back uncontrollably. Damping is important because it keeps spring action in check, which is critical to traction, comfort, and handling. Basically, you don't want your suspension behaving like a pogo stick. Now that you know what damping is, the idea of compression damping ought to be easier to understand. Compression damping is the damping force that's created as the suspension unit is collapsing or compressing. Hit a bump, grab the brakes, etc., and the subsequent load transfer causes the fork or shock to compress, and there's a dedicated compression damping circuit that imparts some drag on that movement. Rebound damping, on the other hand, is the damping force that's in play as the suspension unit extends after being compressed. It's also known as tension, which is why you might see 10 stamped on the top of your fork or the bottom of your shock. All right, so those are the common nouns used to talk about suspension, but there are also some verbs and adjectives used to discuss this stuff. Some common ones are hard or soft and fast or slow. Slow and fast do not refer to the speed at which you're traveling, but rather the speed at which the suspension component is moving. If you hear someone say slow or fast, you know they're talking about damping. However, if you hear them say hard or soft, they might be talking about damping or springs because both damping and spring settings can cause a fork or shock to feel hard or soft. With that, congratulations, you are now fluent in the language of suspension. If not, no worries, it can take a little while for this stuff to sink in and, you know, maybe just watch the video on repeat until it does. But in any case, now you should at least be familiar with the basic vocabulary.